Okay, let's think about alcohol. In a more serious way, from a off-grid stroke self-sufficiency type point of view. The way it stands in the UK at the moment, if you yourself distill alcohol for a biofuel, and this is like it's not for consumption, it's not for drinking, and you don't put it in any form of engine, uh, and you use it for a heating or a cooking fuel, that is perfectly legal so long as you keep detailed records of how much you make and how much you use and you keep those records for a period of six years you can make up to 2500 liters of distilled ethanol alcohol every single year this is legal you are tax exempt you do not need to register with the tax offices here in the UK uh, so long as you keep those records Okay, you need no license, no nothing, and you can be a home distiller. This, I mean, I'm going to include a link down there so you can check through all the like little legal loopholes about this. Uh, well, it's not really legal loopholes. You can check like the, the law about this. Full stop, finito at the end. This is legal and allowed. Then it's a question of how, oh, I mean what you're going to use or the way in which you're going to use the alcohol obviously the simplest method would be to use a spirit stove now some of them if they're small enough and you've got ventilation you can use them indoors so essentially this could be your cooking in the winter indoor solution sorted out if during the spring and the summer and the autumn you distill alcohol and you save it somewhere uh, which will, you know, there'll be a massive fire risk and explosion risk if you, because you're storing alcohol, okay, in a combustible form, but you can still legally do it. Uh, I'm going to include another link here, which gives you an idea of the calorific values of different types of fuel. This particular link, just make sure I'm going to include it, because I'm copying and pasting everything into a text document, thus making it easier for me to then copy and paste that into the foot of this video. Now this shows you that alcohol at 96% proof, basically alcohol by volume, uh, is approximately as calorific as coke, as in that black stuff which has had most of the gases driven off it, you know, black coal once you've had the gases driven off it, so it's smokeless coal. Which is quite a lot of energy per kilogram of fuel. Now, uh, I'm going to include another link, and I'm just going to just quickly, let me just find that one, yeah, copy and paste that one from answers.com, which I think should give you a bit more perspective as to how this could actually be used, all right? Uh, that shows the, what it, as it says there on the website, one watt is a joule per second, a kilowatt is one kilojoule per second, therefore a kilowatt hour is uh, one, it's one kilowatt for 3,600 seconds and therefore, it's 3,600 kilojoules, which gives you an idea as to how many kilojoules there are within your kilogram of alcohol. There's 30 kilojoules per kilogram of alcohol. So bearing that in mind, you then got to think about how you're going to burn it to burn the alcohol at a sufficient rate to, let's say, replace three bars of an electric fire. Uh, and also how you're going to deliver that particular hot air around your property if you wanted to use it for domestic heating. 
And so I'd envisage in my mind something like a, you know, an oil-filled radiator, an electric oil-filled radiator, but with the electrical bit taken off and with the ability of, to have a small volume spirit stove, which you can just fill up, clamp on, set fire to, and it would do its bit and will start heating up the oil. And then maybe once every hour or so, you then put another fresh spirit stovey bit back onto it and then light that because I don't think you could pour it, uh, pour more a ethanol and alcohol into a hot stove okay and I don't think that having um, a perpetual supply of ethanol heat would be a necessarily a good thing unless of course you can very precisely control the f um, combustion rate if you get my drift if you can control the combustion rate then you could be onto a winner um, but trying to get that right using something like an oil-filled uh, radiator for domestic heating could be rather difficult. When it comes to spirit stoves for cooking, it's a different kettle of fish. You can just have your you know, drinks can with a hose cut in it in the right way to make it into a spirit stove. And you can just use one of those inside a, um, a baking tray for safety, okay? And shove your pots on top. So, cooking indoors. On a, on a hob is doable. Okay, baking may not be, but on, on the other hand, for the most part, I make my bread using gram flour and other gluten-free flours in a frying pan rather than um, anything else. So essentially for my purposes, hob cooking, ideal. Then I could just use spirit stoves and have some ventilation, obviously have carbon monoxide uh, detectors inside the property to make sure I'm not doing myself mischief. Uh, and of course a smoke alarm as well. Boom. And then, hey presto, I would then be safe to do off-grid cooking uh, using fuel, which I would have distilled during spring, summer and autumn. I can use my current water distiller for the purposes of making the alcohol. Uh, and so... As long as I get like more equipment in terms of uh, measuring the proof of the alcohol to make sure it's strong enough to be, you know, combustion worthy, I'm basically I'm more or less in business. I will have to nip down to a shop whereby I can buy um, alcohol fermentation equipment and then work out whether I want to use fruits or you know discarded fruits from the market go down to your farmers market or whatever and if there's something left towards the end of the day and, and they're saying look just take this stuff away from us we don't want it it's going to go off you say hey great i'll take it you take it home you then ferment it over a period of a couple of weeks maybe with a bit of extra sugar and nutrients thrown in that can then become after a period of a few weeks the base for you to make the fuel see you, you know you can see the way it's all fitting together if you were to think about using alcohol fuel uh, in an off-grid way. Yes, my current water distiller I've got in the kitchen is electric, which for a completely and totally off-grid lifestyle is not necessarily desirable because it's a 750 watt device. Alright, that's a lot of power which will be taken from your bank of batteries if you're going to use a bank of batteries to generate the, to be the store of electricity for most of, your, most of the things that you do. So, then one of my next projects at some point, I mean, there's so many things I want to do here. One of my next projects is to make a, or get a distiller which I can run off a stovetop or off a fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that too, okay? It sounds dangerous. But it's something else to research and look into vis-a-vis -vis the next big stage. Uh, support me if you can. There's another link for that. And I will look forward to giving you my next off-grid video. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.